past eight years, we've witnessed some incredible things. Redemption. Revival. Lives changed. Hope restored. Miracles. But it's just a glimpse of what's to come. The harvest is still plenty. The workers are still few. few. And there's a story that's still waiting to be told. But to get there, we have to go back to the start. So this is where the story of the Block Church begins, right here in South Philadelphia. And honestly, I couldn't really tell you the story of the Block Church until we ate a little bit because this is how I knew we were here to stay. We started smelling the smells and eating the food. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to what I think is the best pizza pizza and cheesesteak place in the whole city. Lots of good places, but I think Angelo's is number one. Come on, let's go. This is the reason why I moved to Philadelphia. <laughs> this is the upside down pizza, and it is absolutely incredible. I want the crust. I want you to look at the, hold on, do not drop this. This would cost you our marriage. <laughs> All right, well, they know the rules, Laura. Take a bite, give us a review, you know? Oh, oh the sounds, Joey, mm, that you're getting. Sounds great. All right, ready to move on to the cheese stick? Outstanding. I'm good. Outstanding. I don't really need the cheese steak, but. Well, the people, they want to know. Mm -hmm. People want to know. This is the best yeah. in the world. So we're almost at uh, the first house we lived in in Philadelphia. And Lord and I rented it. But we met this guy in South Philly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the start of every story. We met this sure, guy in met South this Philly. Guy in South Philly. And we meet, meet this guy. He's like, "All right, I'll rent you your place, but you gotta give you gotta give me six months up front." And we're like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, we had saved to move here to start the church. You know, to try to survive for a year. But he's like, "And, and also, in addition to the six months, I want first, I want last." And I want security. I so you were gonna miss that point. I was like, man, that took us out. Yeah, I mean, it was like, okay, well, everything we just saved basically to survive is gone. It's kind of like, okay, into faith we go. One of the things that we did in this house was we gathered, you know, all the people, and I cooked so many meals. We bought these uh, square plates because I was obsessed with making sure everything was square, like the block. I mean, tacos and pasta for you know, 30 people almost, what, every Sunday night? Every Sunday night. And we just created community around food. And no one knew each other, but the food was always such an element that people could connect over. And we had great conversations. And I just remember popping into so many of these little corner stores and going to the grocery store and trying to find parking, which didn't exist. I would literally give up sometimes and just go, like, no, I was going to get a ticket and just, and just, park just go anyways. park right on Broad Street and just be like, well, this is a this this night sleep is gonna cost me forty two dollars. This is true. God bless. Can you believe that it all started in that house? There were four people, then there were ten people, then there were forty people in every crevice of that space, all up and down the stairwells. Man, we needed somewhere to go. Yeah, we certainly did. And it was challenging in that pre-launch season. I mean, you know, you're looking for venues, you're getting told no every day, or people are saying, ah, oh, $10,000 an hour. It, it just felt impossible, yeah. uh, which is what this whole thing is, by the way, only God. But I remember in those no's, I wanted pre-launch to end. I wanted to start the church. But God would remind me that even the four people with the Bible open, the church had already begun. Yeah. So those things I held on to yeah. closely when things were difficult and turbulent. And we were supposed to launch in the fall, and as we were rounding the corner in the spring, we were at Old Brick, yeah. uh, at this building in Fishtown, and the people said, yeah, you can use this. We thought we were home. We started building in that neighborhood, and then last second, they pulled the carpet from under us. and. It was so depleted. Yeah, it was devastating oh. for us. I think that felt like the last straw. Mm -hmm. Like, are we actually able to do this? Yeah, I wanted to quit. And 
Then shortly thereafter, through a series of wild events, we end up at Richmond Hall, yeah. really with about a month to spare. It's the summer, it's like August, and we're supposed to launch on in September. September. And there was, you know, at this point, maybe 60 of us, maybe on a good day, counting babies and bellies. And, true. and then on that launch Sunday, September 21st, 2014. As the block church. As the block church, first of public service. We did like this block party outside and then we had service inside. And we met over 600 people on that day. Port Richmond, out of all places, why would you go and start a church there? If I look back at my life and my childhood, a lot of it was marked by being raised by a single mom. Uh, my dad ended up leaving me uh, soon after I was born. I kind of had to be that role model. I had to be that father figure for my siblings. I had to be the protector for my mom. Growing up in Kensington, the entire narrative that you're fed from being a young person is your entire goal in life, your life's aim. The only way that you know that you've truly made it is if you leave Philadelphia. And here I am perplexed and flabbergasted that somebody would choose to come into my neighborhood and start something. I remember being so curious and thinking, what are you seeing that I'm not seeing? At 16 years old, my faith was kind of in a rocky place because I had met Jesus and I knew the power that he had in my life. I met him in a previous faith community, um, but in that community, uh, everyone else was kind of aging out. I mean, I was the youngest person there by leaps, by decades. I really felt like there was no other young people who shared the same passion for Jesus or who could share a similar experience to me. And I was just kind of getting burnt out of the same experiences. And so here we are with a group of young people coming into a neighborhood that is just beyond my mind. Uh, the excitement, the momentum behind it to move into Port Richmond and blocks away from me and to want to start a faith community was really, really exciting. And it started shifting something in my mind just out of curiosity just to see what that would bring. A lot of the circumstances in my life were still very real and dire at the time. And I remember one night in particular, we were having a prayer meeting at Richmond Hall and the place that I was staying at was about a two hour walk away up in North Philly. And I remember walking two hours to go to this prayer meeting. Uh, one, not only because I needed to go and pray, but two, because that same day I had to put everything that I owned into a duffel bag. And I knew that that night I had nowhere to stay. Uh, out of that prayer meeting, it was really cool uh, to, to get there and to be my authentic self and to share with everyone kind of what I was going through. Um, it was that same night that someone from our church actually ended up offering for me to stay at their house. And um, I spent six months with them and they provided shelter, care and love for me in, that, in those moments, which was exactly what I needed. It was in those moments that I started to realize that this community wasn't just a season. It just wasn't a time period in my life. I truly I really knew that these people were gonna be around for the rest of my life and to be the support system that I always needed. One of the things that was unique about my story was that I would channel all of the frustration of the things that I was feeling and I would channel all of that anger, all of that frustration, all of that uh, annoyance as to what was happening to me into my academics. And so I really went through a season where I pressed into school. And uh, by the time I ended up graduating high school, I was offered over $1.3 million in academic scholarships. The idea of making it out of Philadelphia was more tangible than I can ever imagine. All I saw in front of me were four years of secured housing, four years of secured food, and four years of secured fun. And I just remember knowing that, that opportunity was very real for me. It was so hard because I had 18 years of experience of deficit and um, not having enough and I finally have this shot. And at that time, I ended up choosing to leave the city to go to college. Halfway through my degree, I remember going to a Bible study and reading Psalms 139. 
And it's talking about how God, uh, before the foundation of the earth, God actually knew who we were and he formed us in our mother's wombs. And I remember the Lord really speaking to me through that scripture and asking me audibly as I'm walking back to my room, the Lord said, do you want to know who I made you to be? And I said, of course, Lord, I, I, I want to know who you made me to be. And the Lord asked me that three times. And I just remember the last time that he asked me that, he said, well, then I need you to move back to Philadelphia. And here I am working so hard to try and achieve what I thought was life's greatest success. What I thought was a newspaper story, uh, the, the, the typical American dream of you work hard and you get the results. And here was the Lord calling me to say, I want you to abandon all of this and I want you to come and follow me. And it was that next morning, this was at 8 p.m., that next morning, I went into the registrar's office. I withdrew from school and I packed all of my belongings and I moved back to Philadelphia without a place to stay, without a job in hand, without any idea what God wanted me to do. But I knew that he was calling me back to the same city that I once wanted to leave. Since coming back and deciding to make Philadelphia my home, to make Philadelphia the mission of my life right now, my life has been completely different. I can't even begin to describe the amount of miracles that I've seen God do in my life, the joy that God has restored. And being able to be in my same community, being able to be back in Port Richmond and being in Kensington and being in Fishtown and being in the same neighborhood that has robbed me of so much. And now going out every single day, knowing that I'm gonna make a direct impact into that neighborhood, loving back on them has been amazing. So how do you get to this place? How do you get from a kid who literally hates his city who's growing up being told and fed the story that you have to make it out now being an active participant in what God wants to do in a city. Well, at some point you have to realize that being a consumer is okay for a season, but there's a season where you need to go from being a consumer to then being a participant. At some point, the same environments that you walk into, you need to start preparing for other people. At some point, people giving you things and blessing you and being a support system for you, well, now it's your turn to then go and turn and be that to them. How does a kid who grew up with so much trauma, who ended up being in a mental health institution, who tried to take his life, who tried, who had no hope for his future, how does a kid like that end up one day, just a couple years later, just 10 years later, get to a place where he's married, has a wife, has a loving home, and experiences all that he thought he never could? That's just the power of the local church. Here we are eight years after our first service. Our church has grown. One church turned into six locations, four people turned into over a thousand who now call the Block Church home. And what an amazing journey it's been. God has continued to show his hand of provision over our church. We move from location to location, neighborhood to neighborhood, venue to venue, as hundreds of people have come to know Jesus, be baptized, and God has done above and beyond our wildest dreams as great things have happened through the Block Church. During the pandemic, our leadership board and elders and overseers, we began to have a conversation. We can't only meet in venues where we could be in one week and gone the next, just like we are currently experiencing in some places. We realize that everything we've done, all the lives we've changed, the impact we've had in our neighborhoods, they could in a moment be swept out from underneath us because we were renters, not owners. And we said, no more. While we'll always plant locations and rent will be a part of our strategy, strategically certain locations need permanent facilities and places to stay, to not only meet weekly needs, but also throughout the week to serve the needs of our neighborhoods, to be a hub for evangelism, and also to grow together in authentic community. 
Furthermore, and most importantly to us, our next generation needs a stable place to plant themselves, grow, learn about God and raise healthy families and what will be the church of Philadelphia for generations to come. You know, children and youth who attend church, and these is real data, experience higher GPA, have higher satisfaction in family, have 20% more happiness in their life, have relationships with greater trust, are 33% more likely to avoid drinking, smoking, drug use, sexual promiscuity, all of it. And we need places that are going to make an impact for the long term in the neighborhoods that God has called us to reach in this great city of Philadelphia. So as we begin to have these conversations with our leaders and elders, we begin to ask questions. What is God calling us to do about this? How can we make the greatest impact and serve our neighborhoods the best? And through these questions and conversations, we kept saying to ourselves, our city needs us to be here to stay. And from there, our initiative became clear. We know there are 1.6 million people in Philadelphia and those are people who are hurting and seeking truth and have great needs. And while Philadelphia has deep roots in religion or even some established churches, the vast majority of Philadelphians are not plugged into a local church, which means the vast majority of people in our city are lost, are not following Jesus. That's what data would tell us. 14.8% of our population is actually not scripturally engaged, which means that's a 6.7% decline since 2020, which means the urgency has to elevate. Philadelphia lost a reported 1,214 lives to overdose in 2020. And our city's murder rate hit a reported historic level of 561 people in 2021. Truth is that regular church attendance significantly improves your mental health. And people who attend Christian church regularly are 29% less likely to be depressed, five times less likely to commit suicide, have reduced anxiety, and regular church attenders were the only population segment whose mental health improved during 2020. We also know that one of the best ways to reach lost people is to establish neighborhood driven churches that become part of the community. And right now, as many are leaving the city in the droves, we are going to tell our city we aren't going anywhere. So we're going to start a new initiative and that initiative is called Here to Stay. Our Here to Stay campaign is going to last for the next two years. And here's how it's going to work. First, we're gonna stay committed to all of what the Block Church has been doing for the last eight years. For example, we're gonna continue investing in the Block Kids, the Block Youth, Serve Saturdays, and our other ministries. Secondly, not only are we going to continue doing all of those things, we're stepping into the future of what God has for our church by beginning the process of obtaining our own properties. What would it look like for several of our locations to own properties? How would it change our city? We're expecting God to do great things. For our Northwest location, we're going to buy and renovate. Same for the Northeast, but this will be our broadcast facility and it will likely be the largest facility. For Port Richmond and Espanol, we've already bought the building. We're gonna complete renovations and then pay for it. For online, we're gonna invest heavily in this infrastructure over the next season to expand our global reach. And for other locations like Center City, not only does this improve your experience, it's gonna open doors for the future. And of course, there'll be a central space to gather for our entire church for special and unique experiences. In other words, this initiative impacts every location now and for the future. Now, these are things that we are called to invest in over the next two years during the initiative. I know a lot of you are asking, how is this gonna happen? How are we gonna accomplish this? Well, it's impossible, but with God and together, we can do this. We've gotta change the way we look at generosity. Now, sometimes it's confusing to say, give to a project or give to this building project or location or existing ministry. So over the next two years, we're gonna create one big Here to Stay fund. And as you give to the Here to Stay campaign, we're gonna use the monies given to advance the mission and vision of the kingdom of God in Philadelphia. It's 
simply looks like this. At a baseline, it takes about $1.75 million a year for the Block Church to operate and $3.5 million over a two-year period. So together, we're going to look at giving a little bit different, and we're going to increase our giving to raise an additional $2.8 million for buildings and renovations. That'll be a total of $6.3 million so we can move forward and do all God's called us to do through the campaign. What we're going to do is we're going to ask you to process, pray, and plan. How will God call you to realign some things in your life, to step up your giving, or even give a large one-time gift if God's blessed you with stored assets? On a personal note, Laura and I are extremely excited about what God is going to do through the Block Church, and we are all in. We've already had conversations. We've already been praying and processing. We've committed to not only give our regular tithe, which is important, but to increase our giving to what God is calling us to do to be a part of the campaign, which is both significant and extremely sacrificial. So we just arrived at our Northeast location and uh, it's been quite the journey for these people here at, at this location. Before we launched Northeast, before the pandemic, um, we were so full in Port Richmond. Of course, Port Richmond birthed the Northeast. There were so many people coming down from the Northeast and, um, and even from Bucks County. And, you know, the, it, the location quickly grew and we started to realize, hey, this is probably gonna be our broadcast location that will be the largest and service the rest of the locations. And so, um, you know, there was a Sunday, it wasn't an Easter, it wasn't an anniversary. There was a Sunday where almost 800 people were in church. And we started to think about, okay, we got, we got to find a home, got to find a home, but there's a time limit. There's a cap because we've got children's ministry caps. We've got parking caps. There's a limit to how many people we can reach here. And it's really critical. It's, it's a really important that this happens for us to be here to stay uh, in Philadelphia and beyond. And, and so uh, we're at this critical juncture where, uh, yeah, time is running short on, on, on our venue and and we got to make a move but you and i together we're going to move the ball forward and god's going to come through uh so that so that lives will be changed for eternity so that our kids and and their kids and people who don't even know god yet are going to walk into a facility and go wow this is the church this is the house of god and their lives are going to be changed forever and so um yeah thanks for this being a part of the story and uh, all that God uh, is going to do for you. What do you think about that? Just yesterday, I was standing in front of my job site and looked at a traffic sign that was vandalized with the words, Welcome to Kensington. Your hope and dreams have officially been canceled. And immediately I felt this pain come over me for our city and this pain for uh, my neighborhood. And I, I understood that it, it I recalled the words that the power of life and death are in the tongue. Something that I understood is that if we want to see revival overpower and flood the streets of our city, it has to start with the words that come out of our hearts and out of our minds. 
So I encourage you and invite you to come and war with me tonight. Would you join me in prayer and intercession that you would begin to release a sound of victory and a sound of freedom over our church, a sound of victory and a sound of freedom over our city, that we would begin to to declare that our city will see life, that our city will see revival. Would you begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, would heaven touch down, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, would salvation flood the streets, and we declare, and we believe that the gates of hell shall not prevail over the city of Philadelphia, in the name of Jesus.